All right, I'm back. It's Susan Kennedy, and um, I'm just starting to lay out a floral. I just kind of wanted to have fun with it and do some garden-style roses, kind of sitting in the sunshine. I'm basing it on some of my own photos of some roses, and I'm just starting to lay in some washes. I'm trying to get that shadow color, and I'm using quinacridone red and cobalt blue, adding a little bit of permanent yellow to it to come up with uh, eh, almost a neutral color. I'll see how it goes here. I might flood it with uh, some yellow here in a minute if I don't like what's happening. I've got too strong a color there. I have uh, just taped down some Windsor, I mean not Windsor Newton, Arches watercolor paper, cold press, to some foam board. I don't bother with stretching my watercolor paper because no matter what I do, no matter how hard I stretch it, it still buckles. So I've just given up trying to stretch it before the fact. And uh, what I end up doing is just stretching it. I'm flooding a little bit of um, my yellow in there in the center. But I end up stretching it after I'm done. Um, I've never found a problem with dampening the back of the, uh, the painting with clear water when it's completely done. Being careful not to damage the painting on the on the other side, just dampening the back of it, weighing it down between some clean pieces of foam board and letting it dry for a couple of days. I much much better results doing that than going through the frustrating process of trying to stretch it and despite my best efforts having it buckle anyway. I've never really understood that paper stretching debate. Add just some clear water in there. I'm trying to save myself uh, those whites. Paint around the highlighted areas that I see in my photo. I'm not really sticking to my photo completely. connect those shadowy areas too. Add a little bit of blue there to each other so that they kind of flow into each other. You don't want the pieces to look all disjointed. What I'm kind of looking for is a network of shadows that give me a, just a skeleton, a, a value composition skeleton, if you will. And there's more of my light source is going to be coming down there, the bright sun. So this side is going to be much brighter, so my wash is going to be paler. Okay, I'm going to it down here to the other flower. I think I'm going to take a second to mix a dark wash and maybe work on that background a little bit. It always helps me to give myself a pretty quick laying in of, of the values of my painting from the very beginning. And this is ultramarine blue going all the way up to my taped edge, alizarin crimson, and sap green. It's going along the edges of my flower. It's even hitting some of the wash areas where it's probably going to make a bloom, but that's not always bad. Leave myself a few sparkly places in the background just to look like foliage because I want to a garden setting, what I remember of Mom's rose garden. She's a champion rose grower. This 
shapes don't look very natural. There we go. Better. Anyway, check back later for more work on this floral and others. And uh, check out my website at susankennedy.com. I have some painting tips, I have a lot of auctions. This painting is for sale if you're interested. Let me know. I think I'll post it on eBay as a painting in progress within a couple of days, but it might take me a few days to get to that point. And uh, let me know what you're doing. Thanks for looking.